Hello, everyone. Wednesday morning, April the 1st. So I'm sure some of you may have experienced the April, April Fool's joke stuff, but maybe it's a good thing if we're trying to retain our sense of humor, playing innocent jokes on each other. So it's Wednesday. It's the day of St. Joseph. Just wanted to give you a little uh, extra thought to reflect on as you go through throughout the day. Uh, St. Joseph, um, he really is the greatest of all the saints, next to Mary, of course, but he is the greatest of all the saints. Scripture describes him as a just man. What I want to highlight for you today for your reflections is that St. Joseph did not have an easy life in a different way than some of us are not having an easy life because we can't go out of the home. Many people are scared or frightened about the economic situation. This is, of course, becoming more and more the topic of conversation. Even our political leaders, they know full well, you know, that this has to be somehow addressed or dealt with in some way. I'm sure they're, you know, they're collectively discussing this uh, and trying to, to, uh, to help people. Uh, <clears throat> so, but St. Joseph did have a very difficult life. I mean, if you, just to, to highlight, you know, a few things, he couldn't find a place where even the Christ child was to be born. Mary's child was to be born. It was kind of like a thing that happened. Uh, it was a cave, you know, in which Jesus could be born, but that was God's will. That's where God wanted uh, the master to be born. Uh, he lived a very poor life, worked very hard as a carpenter, probably made uh, what we would call eked out an existence. You know, I mean, he had enough to eat, obviously, and, and buy his house and uh, you know, pay for the instruments that he had, but it, he led, led a very, very, very simple life. He had to flee to a foreign land soon after the Magi came. And probably what the gifts they gave uh, the Holy Family, the Magi, the gifts they gave were probably what they were able to live on. So again, God provided for them, even though they, in the midst of their uh, struggles and pain and having to leave. And then worst of all, into a foreign land like Egypt that they had come out of, which represented slavery for the Jewish people. And then, of course, they had, when it was over, when Herod was dead, they had to go back. Uh, they wanted to go to Bethlehem, but they couldn't because Archelaus was reigning. So they were rerouted to Nazareth. So they, they had to go to a different place. And this is where he grew up. And yet he was always responding to God's will through the ministry of angels. And Joseph, and there's never in any way manifested a, have a hesitation on Joseph's part when God requires him to do something. And you can't do that constantly, uh, sort of grinding your teeth or, you know, uh, resisting or kicking against the goad. You, the, that is a manifestation of the supernatural uh, within you. So in other words, Joseph was a man of great joy, even though he had a tough life. So we shouldn't underestimate the fact that he had a tough life, but he was a man of joy. So you and I can ask the greatest of all the patriarchs to help us be cheerful in our self-quarantine situations. Uh, pray the litany of St. Joseph or the memorari to St. Joseph. I'm going to actually uh, make this available on uh, the Facebook page later on, maybe in a half, uh, an hour or so. I'm going to make it available for people to pray. Uh, and it's a beautiful litany to pray on Wednesdays. And the memorari to St. Joseph is also a beautiful prayer to pray. And also try to remember, count three blessings, three blessings every single day. It's a good way to stay positive. But, you know, that's a natural kind of way of approaching it, which is good. It inoculates us against being negative. But it's also a supernatural way to acknowledge God is with us always. So if you woke up this morning and you're watching this, you're not in purgatory yet. Maybe you think you are. But if you're watching this, that's a huge blessing. You've woken up. You have life. Um, and there's many others, but just three. You can go five, but just three. Just, uh, every, but do it every single day. And this will inoculate us against any negativity or just thinking that things are not, I won't use some of my regular words, they're just not nice uh, and they're difficult. Uh, so try to remember this and uh, have a blessed day and Mass will begin. Lord, who throughout these 40 days for us it's fast and pray. Teach us with thee to mourn our sins, and most mighty to stay. As thou wish Satan is to 
A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, furious with rage, addressed the three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Is it true that you do not serve my gods and that you refuse to worship the golden statue I have erected? To worship the gold, <clears throat> when you hear the sound of horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, or any other instrument, are you prepared to prostrate yourself and worship the statue I have made? If you refuse to worship it, you must be thrown straight away into the burning furnace, into the burning fiery furnace. And, and where is your God who would save you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to King Nebuchadnezzar, your question hardly requires an answer. If our God, the one we serve, is able to save us from the burning fiery furnace and from your power, O King, he will save us. And, if he, and even if he does not, then you must know, O King, that, he will not, that we will not serve your God or worship the statue you have erected. These words infuriated King Nebuchadnezzar. His expression was very different now, and he looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave orders for the furnace to be made seven times hotter than usual and commanded certain stalwarts from his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the burning fiery furnace. They walked in the heart of the flames, praising God and blessing the Lord. The angel of the Lord came down into the, into the furnace beside Azariah and his companions. He drove the flames of the fire outward and fanned into them, into the heart of the furnace, a coolness such as wind and dew will bring, so that the fire did not even touch them or cause them any pain or distress. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sprang to his feet in amazement. He said to his advisors, did we not have th these three men thrown bound into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. But he went on, I can see four men walking about freely in the heart of the fire without coming to any harm. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, 
Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He has sent his angel to rescue his servants, who, putting their trust in him, defied the order of the king and preferred to forfeit their bodies rather than serve or worship any god but their own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed, Lord God of our fathers. To you, glory and praise forevermore. Bless your glorious holy name. To you, glory and praise forevermore. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed in the temple of your glory. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed on the throne of your kingdom. To you, glory and praise forevermore. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed who gaze into the depths. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed in the firmament of heaven. To you, glory and praise forevermore. To you, glory and praise forevermore. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. To the Jews who believed in him, Jesus said, If you make my word your home, you will indeed be my disciples. You will learn the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered, We are descended from Abraham, and we have never been the slaves of anyone. What do you mean? You will, make, you will be made free. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, everyone who commits sin is a slave. Now the slave's place in the house is not assured, but the son's place is assured. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descended from Abraham, but in spite of this, you want to kill me because nothing I say has penetrated into you. What I, for my part, speak of is what I have seen from my seen with my father. <clears throat> but you, you put into action the lessons learned from your father. They repeated, our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do as Abraham did. As it is, you want to kill me. When I tell you the truth, as I have learned it from God, that is not what Abraham did. What you are doing is what your father does. We were not born of prostitution, they went on. We have one father, God. Jesus answered, if God were your father, you would love me. Since I have come here from God, yes, I have come from him. <clears throat> not, that I, not that I came because I chose. No, I was sent and by him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Holy Gospel blot out all my sins. So two points for reflection. One is taken from the first reading, actually, from the book of Daniel, this encounter the three young men have with King Nebuchadnezzar, being thrown in the furnace. Uh, it's probably familiar to most of us. But it's always good to remember, that in this case, God shows us a power he has. Because in, and the whole point here is Nebuchadnezzar throws at them the world's temptation. You know, I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to use my power to do something against you. And what's your God going to do about it then? Huh? What's your God going to do about it then? So it's the temptation the world throws at us or the devil throws at us. In this case, they give the classic response, classic in the sense that it's a supernatural response that we need to appropriate into ourselves because it's totally realistic and supernatural. Number one, our God can save us period. But if he chooses to let us burn alive, 
We're not backing down. God is still God. He's not God because it our faith does not depend on God saving us from being burned alive. We haven't gone looking for this, O oh King. We haven't gone looking for this, whatever the situation is in our modern life. But now that we're here, we're not backing down. We're not going to turn our back on God. It doesn't matter what you say or do. If we die, we die. If we live, we live. Now, th this doesn't make any sense from a natural point of view, only from a supernatural point of view. These men have a profound faith. And this is centuries before the sacraments came into existence. So it's a challenge to you and me, who are most probably mostly Catholics, listen to, listening to this. You know, when it comes to temptation, or when it comes to people perhaps uh, wanting to hurt us, and we think, why didn't God save me from that? I'm not going to get into all the, you know, the qualifiers that are necessary to, well, because of this, because of this, because of this. But you remember, God is God, period. And our faith is not hinged on God saving us from every difficult or painful or disastrous situation in life. Good people suffer. Bad people sometimes seem not to suffer. Um, so that's really important to remember, to the gospel. And so the whole concept of sin is often rejected by the so-called modern age and is often misunderstood by those who follow Jesus who claim to be his disciples. Many reject the idea or the concept of sin as something of a throwback, you know, to an ancient time when everything was black and white, sin or not sin. There was little science and all that kind of stuff. When the church ruled and was seen or understood rightly or wrongly, perhaps is using uh, sin to keep people in line, you know, the threat of excommunication and all this. Sometimes that was done. Can't ignore the reality or the truth of life. Then after the Second Vatican Council, and I'll just use one of my favorite examples to highlight this, there's so many more, uh, to highlight this, um, is that the church changed or altered some of its discipline regarding, for example, no meat on Fridays. This is a, this is a big thing for Catholics. We almost identified you like the sign of the cross. You didn't eat meat on uh, Fridays if you were a Catholic. Uh, so before Vatican II, it was a mortal sin. Huh? It was a mortal sin. If done deliberately, always the three conditions have to be met in order to incur the guilt of a mortal sin. So um, it was a mortal sin if you ate meat on Friday. But after the council, somewhere I think around the 70s, the discipline was relaxed and you were taught that you could substitute for another act of penance. Now the problem here is that the whole, a whole lot of disciplinary acts that we were required to do were somehow thrown out like the baby with the bathwater and, and just not done anymore. And we wonder why, along with dismissing the sacrament of penance, it's like, did we ever graduate from sin? Huh? No. Uh, in fact, what we needed to do was, you know, perhaps the problem before the council, although I was a baby, you know, in 1959, council was 62 to 65, but what needs to be done is a proper formation of the conscience. That's what needs to be done so people go to confession for the right reason and make a good integral confession. They're not doing it because they're obsessive, compulsive, uh, or they're not doing it because they have you know, a scrupulous conscience or they're taking it too lightly uh, and all this kind of stuff. But we need to form the conscience so that we are having this encounter with Christ in a personal, effective uh, and uh, spiritually fruitful way. And so the 70s produced this statement, I'm OK and you're OK, which, which is partly true. But it's also very deceptive because the truer statement would be, I'm not okay, and you're not okay, and that's okay. That's the truth of it. Otherwise, we wouldn't need a savior. Now, this means that we are defective. We have a major fault line in our character, our soul, our nature, and we should not ignore this or sugarcoat its disastrous consequences. Uh, <clears throat> the good news of Jesus requires us to acknowledge our sinfulness. You know, the Pope has said, Pope Francis, uh, I can't remember his exact words, but basically, I am a sinner. Yeah, that's the gospel truth. And people were astounded the Pope said this. It's, it's, it's the gospel truth. The Pope is just acknowledging his relationship before God. This is, this is really important. So the good news is that 
uh, of Christ requires us to acknowledge our sinfulness, this doesn't mean that we beat up, beat ourselves up or think that we're horrible people, although we all know that we're capable of being horrible people at times or doing horrible things. That doesn't mean we're rotten you know, to the core, but that we have this fault line within us. We have to take it with due seriousness. Jesus Christ has come into this world to offer us an antidote to this noxious poison, this disease, spiritual disease that we have that's within us and communicates, and Jesus communicates this medicine, medicine from the cross through the sacraments. It still requires that we struggle every single day that we get out of bed, not assuming or presuming anything. You know, every day we start again and again and again. You take your vitamins or every day we eat and we need Jesus Christ every day, not just once a week for an hour on Sunday, if that's people go to, if they go to church on Sunday, when they can, when we resume, <laughs> but we need him every single day. And the sacraments from baptism through to the anointing of the sick, which means the Eucharist on a regular basis, confession on a regular basis for the fortification of our soul. It's not just to remove the guilt of sin, but it fortifies the soul. It encourages us, it strengthens us, not only to resist sin, but to grow in virtue, and to be in effect better people. And so one of the essential criteria benefit, benefiting um, in any way when it comes to Jesus Christ is to acknowledge that I need to be saved. I'm not okay. Uh, this acknowledgement opens the heart to grace and Christ is just waiting for you and for me and whoever reaches out to him so that he can come into our lives again and again and again. It's not just I'm baptized and this notion I'm saved. It's sort of the implication is, well, I'm saved and it's a done deal. No, I'm being saved every day. I am being saved. Because as soon as we you know, get high on ourselves and we think it's somehow a done deal before we're dead and in heaven, we're going to start slipping because we've lost an important supernatural attitude of beginning again constantly. And so we cannot do this on our own. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Can't remember the exact place in John's gospel but it's there. St. Paul flips this around in Philippians and says, in him, I can do all things. In him, I can do all things. So today, tell the Lord you love him and that you need him. Don't just tell him once, but often, often as you need to. It's just the truth, but it's also a wonderful way to cultivate the presence of God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the earth, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. <clears throat> For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the, on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petitions for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard your mind and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise of the offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Lydus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those who have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took his precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as much as we are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high and the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray to all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants of those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit as we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God has brought us to 
of the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never to permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I wish, my Lord, to receive you with purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you the spirit and fervor of the saints. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Attend, Almighty God, to the prayers of your people, and as you now, as you endow them with confident hope in your compassion, let them feel as ever the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael Prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As a Jesus with us above.